Major depressive disorder is a chronic, reoccurring, and potentially life-threatening illness. MDD is a fairly common disorder, affecting 121 million people worldwide. It is the fourth leading contributor to the global burden of disease. According to a study conducted by the World Health Organization in 2007, depression accounts for 4.5% of the total worldwide burden of disease in terms of disability across the globe. Data taken from the National Comorbidity Survey Replication remarks that in the United States, MDD has a 20% lifetime prevalence among women and a 12% prevalence among men. Each year, about 9 to 10% of the U.S. population, about 30 million Americans, suffer from this illness. Those with a family member with MDD may be 1.5 to 3 times as likely to develop the disease than those who do not. Depression worsens the health of people suffering from other chronic diseases and is responsible for up to 70% of psychiatric hospitalizations. 850 hundred thousand Americans die from suicide each year. Only 21% of people with depression are adequately treated, and the cost to these people's lives and society is enormous. Although there have been surveys taken about mental health in the United States since the end of World War II, specific criterion for mental disorders was not developed until the early 1980s. MDD is a mental disorder characterized by a distinct change in mood. Symptoms include feelings of sadness and upset with additional changes in major psychophysiological aspects of behavior, such as appetite, sleep, sexual desire, concentration, the ability to feel pleasure, crying, slowed speech, and action, as well as suicidal thoughts. Five or more of these symptoms must be present for at least two weeks and be evident daily to justify a diagnosis of major depressive episode. They also must not alleviate when the external cause of these emotions dissipates, if an external cause is present at all. Symptoms can range from mild to severe, depending on how much a person's daily life is impaired. Persons who exhibit symptoms that are relatively mild but persist for over two years are considered to have dysthymia. Other subtypes are atypical depression and depression that occurs after a specific trauma. Depression has been recognized as a medical condition since the time of the ancient Greeks. It used to be referred to as melancholy, and it was thought that Abraham Lincoln suffered from this. Throughout the 17th and 18th centuries, people with mental illnesses, especially mental illness that disturbed society, were often put in prison. Nervous issues were considered less harmful to society and included depression, anxiety, and hypocrisy. Wealthier individuals would take a vacation to one of the many European spas as treatment for their sad and nervous behaviors. Hydrotherapy was another common treatment choice. People believed that drinking and or bathing in water that was rich in minerals would help cure them. Toward the end of the 19th century, hypnosis was used as a treatment for these nervous diseases, which influenced the idea of psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis was 45 minutes of treatment, five days a week, that consisted of the patient laying on a couch and the therapist standing behind them out of view. Then the patient would speak their mind and hope to get guidance from the therapist. The 1950s was the first time that antidepressant drugs were used. A doctor gave an anti-tuberculosis drug to a depressed person, and it made them more sociable and brought back their interest and appetite. This drug, imipramine, was the first TCA. MAOIs were discovered a little while after this. In 1974, doctors were testing a new drug, which they called an SSRI. This drug was called fluoxetine. This drug, commonly called Prozac, became the second best-selling drug in the world by 1994. Today, MDD is treated pharmacologically as well as psychotherapeutically. The most common type of pharmacological treatment is with antidepressant drugs called SSRIs, or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. These drugs increase the concentration of neurotransmitters in the brain. SSNIs, MAOIs, and TCAs are also other treatment options. Side effects are significant and can include metabolic syndrome and a decrease in sexual interest, amongst other symptoms. Cognitive behavioral therapy is recommended in conjunction with pharmacological treatment. CBT aims to solve problems of depression and other mental disorders through goal-oriented systemic procedures to alleviate the symptoms of depression. 
It is used in individual and group settings and has become the prime method of treatment within self-help groups. Diet and exercise have recently been targets of studies as to their implications in treatment for symptoms of major depressive disorder. Causes of major depressive disorder have classically been thought of as a deficiency in the neurotransmitters, specifically the monoamines such as serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Antidepressant drugs were thought to prolong their concentration and breakdown in the synaptic cleft, which alleviated this depressed mood. This simplified theory has been presented to the public and has helped to medicalize depression within society. This theory has come under scrutiny recently because of the length of time it takes to achieve remission of symptoms. Antidepressant drugs change neurotransmitter levels soon after admission, but clinical relief of symptoms takes weeks to achieve. This was originally thought to be because of increased receptor sensitivity to high levels of neurotransmitters in the synapse. However, this view has changed recently because of the knowledge of second messenger systems within the brain. This has changed the way researchers believe these drugs work. The neurogenic theory of depression proposes that relief from symptoms actually occurs because of the creation of new neurons and the repair of malfunctioning neurons in the brain. Antidepressant drugs have been shown to repair neurons and increase neurogenesis. However, electroconvulsive therapy, exercise, and light therapy have also proven effective in this respect as well. It is important that individuals suffering from MDD get treatment at their first sign of symptoms, as the incidence of relapsing increases with each episode experienced. It's important to also understand the differences in terminology between response and remission. In the acute phase, response is a period during which a substantial improvement is, is observed, but the patient is not completely asymptomatic. In most clinical studies of antidepressant efficacy, a response to medication is often measured by a greater than 50% decrease from the baseline Hamilton Depression Rating Scale score, which serves as a marker for whether or not a drug is effective. Remission occurs when there is only minimal or no symptoms. The patient is able to return to functional normality and no longer meets diagnostic criteria. Patients who achieve remission generally do not require an increase in the intensity of their treatment regimen. Remission is often measured as a HAMD score of less than 7. Most studies of antidepressant efficacy do not document full symptomatic remission and restoration of normal functioning. However, studies suggest that patients who do best in the continuation phase are those who have achieved the most complete symptomatic remission at the end of the acute phase. As mentioned previously, MDD has a significant impact of the ability of individuals to work and be productive members of society. Failure to achieve remission can have deleterious effects on the body and mind. One of the primary reasons that individuals suffering from MDD do not get help is the fear of the social stigma associated with the disease. There used to be a lot of stigma associated with people with mental illnesses, such as major depressive disorder. And although the amount of stigma has decreased, it still exists today. People who are mentally ill are often seen as having a weakness that caused their mental illness. We have discovered that weakness is not what causes mental illnesses, but some of the stigma still remains. People are sometimes afraid of people with mental illnesses, or they look negatively upon them and sometimes even reject them completely. Stigma has affected the ability for those with mental health issues to get treatment because they don't want to get want to be rejected and people didn't accept them. Other negative effects of stigma include being harassed or having to deal with physical violence, pretending nothing's wrong, school or work problems including discrimination, insurance problems where their insurance doesn't cover mental illnesses. Stop the stigma. Ways to stop the stigma associated with mental illnesses are don't be afraid to get treatment. Don't doubt yourself or feel shameful. Get help if you have a mental illness that affects your schoolwork or job. Get support. Use your resources and speak out to try and stop stigma.